Christine, you just came back from the Global Science Conference on Climate Smart Agriculture in Wageningen. From your perspective, what's the most important outcome of that meeting, both in terms of practical outcomes and in the light of the trajectory that the Commission has with its work? Um, so, Pascal, I think there were two really important things that happened here. One was just bringing together 160 scientists and researchers from around the world, so folks who come from research institutions, folks who come from government, folks who come from civil society, farmers associations, bringing all of those people together for a three-day meeting to interact both formally and informally is tremendously important and is really part of this ongoing long-term path towards finding uh, climate uh, resilient agriculture that can continue to feed the planet. And um, so in addition to having that interactive dialogue and really uh, engaging in the set of scientific issues and practical issues or practical solutions, um, another main theme and a near-term outcome of the conference was to um, have those voices of those 160 scientists come together in a declaration. And they were successful in doing that. So the organizers had set up a set of working groups that met each day um, informed by a set of keynotes that took up the, the most critical issues. And so in the course of those working groups, they explored dimensions of climate smart agriculture, which was, of course, the, the, the focus of the discussion of the meeting, and uh, pulled together a document that, that, that tried to summarize the most important elements. And so a few of those things that I thought were quite useful was just simply to have that entire group come together and say, look, climate smart agriculture and agriculture overall has a critical role to play for the world to feed people, provide sustainable livelihoods, but also can be part of the climate change, climate change solution um, as a, as a co-benefit of sustainable agriculture. So, so just making that clear statement and encouraging policymakers uh, around the world to, to really take that up in a real way was, was a key piece. Another piece was the, the emphasis on participatory research. So the idea that solutions don't just come from academia, they don't just come from research enterprise, they come from the field, they come from different regions, and different local areas around the world, and it's the engagement among those different activities that really is going to bring the best solutions and finding systems for bringing those solutions um, up to scale and sharing them globally. So that was the key piece. I think uh, another key piece more on the policy side was the um, uh, desire of the group to speak to this upcoming uh, conference of the parties, which will be in South Africa in exactly a month under the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. And one of the things that the, uh, that the group agreed on was the importance of starting to really legitimately include agriculture in the activity and the agreements under the UNFCCC. And one of the pathways that a scientist they see as most useful is uh, a work program under the SUBSA, the Subsidiary Body for Science and Technological Advice. So that's a body that can start to be a venue, really, for exploring what are the ways that agriculture could be meaningfully included in the climate change solution without uh, negatively impacting and, and supporting, again, this issue, the importance of providing food for the whole planet and for providing sustainable livelihoods. The Commission was set up to identify which policy changes and actions would be needed to help the world achieve food security in the face of climate change by bringing together existing evidence. Why is this necessary right now? That's a great question. Um, well, on the one hand, we're actually quite lucky. There's been tremendous activity, again, in at the research scale. And again, also, there's been quite a, a lot of um, activity to, to do synthesis and assessment, to look at the body of knowledge that's been produced from institutions and practitioners around the world and pull all of that up together. And one of the things the Commission started out doing was having a really solid look at 16 of these major assessment reports to say, look, where are we now? Let's, let's do a stock take of what we've learned through these processes. And um, what the Commission has, I think, done as a value add on top of that is to say, um, we're really looking at the entire food system. Sustainable agriculture is, of course, a critical piece of achieving food security in the context of climate change. But, um, and this was brought up very well, I think, in several of the keynotes, including by uh, John Beddington and by John Ingram at the meeting, 
the point that there are opportunities not only in agriculture, the production side of meeting food security needs, but there are opportunities in uh, processing, in distribution, storage, retailing, and again, really importantly, on the consumption side. So really, I think one of the key pieces that the Commission is going to contribute when it launches uh, its summary for policymakers later uh, in the mid middle of November, and then uh, does a main report uh, a little bit later on, that um, my hope is that the contribution will be putting a really clear narrative, a really clear storyline of where the whole set of opportunities are. There's not a silver bullet or a one-size-fits-all approach. Rather, there's a whole range of activities that, if um, implemented in parallel, could really change the game for the food system. I'd say one other piece of that, of course, that the Commission will speak to is the need for ongoing systems. So we've got, uh, again, uh, tremendous investments around the world in, in agriculture research, maybe not as strong as they've been in the past, but still very much there. So both uh, re-energizing, revitalizing those research enterprises, but even more importantly, bringing them together, integrating them with a clear uh, focus on addressing food security and dealing with climate resilience and adaptation and mitigation challenges. I think that's really where the Commission is trying to step forward, learn from what's already been done in the past, and bring uh, some new, some new thinking. Yeah, we spoke about the presentation of the findings already now. I believe the Commission will be presenting the, the, the actual findings at Agriculture Day in Durban, which is on 3rd of December. That's one of the, that's one of the places that um, the Commission chair, and I should mention that the Commission is composed of 13 scientists from around the world, and so they are representing in their personal capacity um, their own expertise, but they're hailing from places like Australia, China, Vietnam, uh, Bangladesh, India, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa, the United Kingdom and France, the U.S., uh, Mexico, and Brazil. So, so we're really drawing on a wide variety of both technical and scientific perspectives, but also geographic perspectives. And so certainly um, having uh, that as a resource, uh, as a way to sort of bring some of the Commission's learning and recommendations out into the world is a key piece of what the Commission is looking to do. But it's also really important, of course, to be at some of these signature events and be there um, in Durban, for example. So this uh, Conference of the Parties, number 17, is, of course, an important venue for bringing agriculture's profile up into those discussions. The Agriculture and Rural Development Day is a place where um, a whole set of individuals who have their eye on that particular uh, component of the climate change question uh, will be there. And so uh, Sir John Bennington, the Commission Chair, will deliver a keynote and will uh, share those findings. Um, and then, of course, have an opportunity to engage with, uh, with people who were there throughout the day. So you believe that the UNFCCC process is still a major, um, a major process that can contribute to bringing the climate change agenda forward, the, the agriculture climate change agenda? One of the things that has come up in some of the Commission discussions is the fact that there is no single global process that really um, is taking care of the, the full spectrum of agricultural issues. So, of course, uh, agriculturalists around the world are both dealing with changing climate, and that can include things like extreme weather events and drought, and, and we're starting to see increasing evidence, uh, evidence of increasing frequency of these kinds of events this is a major problem for agriculture. So there's an adaptation to climate change challenge. And of course, there's a mitigation opportunity, given that agriculture is such a, you know, covers such a large land base and is a source uh, and can potentially be a sink for greenhouse gases. Um, the, the UNFCCC is a critical venue. It is probably not the only venue where important issues of food security will, will certainly, it is not the only venue. Um, the, uh, the uh, Group of 20 processes, Group of 20 Nations countries, has been an important process uh, hosted through France and through Mexico now in 2012. The Rio Plus 20 Earth Summit, of course, is a tremendous opportunity for nations of the world to come together and take a look at um, the full set of sustainability issues. And really, it's critically important that agriculture's role and the food system's role is, is really brought up to the fore so that um, so that, again, the kinds of recommendations that the Commission will put forward um, can actually move into implementation and get the kinds of policy attention and resource attention that, that will be really important to make them, make them real in the world. Let's go back for a second to the actual report 
You know, I'm aware that you can't really preempt the launch and, and all that, you know. But uh, let's do a bit of a sneak preview. What, what do you think are the likely recommendations of the Commission? Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the global food system and why it's so important in the context of climate change and other challenges for the whole of mankind. Where's this report going to be at in this process? Well, as I said before, I think having a, having a clear look at the set of opportunities that come up in the production side in agriculture, and again, um, on ag in the agriculture side, we've got a tremendously diverse global agricultural system. So the way that um, changes and transformation in global agriculture go forward will be very specific to given context. However, there are a couple of big wins that are probably available in many places, right? So we're talking about um, more sustainable use of water resources, more sustainable use of soil resources, um, increasing attention to the potential of, of more diversity within the agricultural system, both for uh, nutrition, for livelihoods, and for biodiversity. So there's a lot of opportunities that we're probably going to see um, across the globe that there's already been quite a bit of pilot activity um, that has either emerged up from the ground or been sponsored through, uh, through groups like um, uh, like certainly the membership of the Global Donor Platform have supported many of these kinds of initiatives. So there's an evidence base to see what works and what kind of benefits come out of trying to transform the way agriculture is, is, is implemented. 